Here we go. So hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Public Weekly Meeting. Today we are the 23 of August 2022. Um, Hervé, may I ask you to share the, share the, the collaborative notes link inside the chat, please? Yep. So most of us should have access to the notes there. Do not hesitate to help me. Um, so we have a guest today, Bob. Um, I propose that we get started with you before we proceed with the rest. So let me take note. Um, Bob Miles Wright, can I let you introduce yourself and explain a, a bit why you have joined us today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, my name is Bob Miles. I'm the founder of Salad. Uh, Salad.com is, is uh, our domain. And we're building a distributed cloud infrastructure uh, uh, product, starting with a managed container service. And, you know, as a very early stage startup, we're kind of exploring what are the different workloads, use cases, jobs that we might be able to support with our infrastructure. Uh, what makes it unique is instead of being powered by, you know, a purpose-built data center, uh, we've got uh, tens of thousands of, nodes provided by gamers and their uh, PCs with GPUs um, providing the compute. So we're very early stage, um, just bringing an MVP to market and I'm kind of reaching out to explore um, kind of partnerships and provide compute in return for feedback for the, um, the new product that we're building. And um, here at Jenkins, you know, I know you guys, uh, some of the work that you guys do with batch jobs and CI, CD kind of fit the characteristics of what might be compatible with, yeah. with our infrastructure. And obviously there's plenty of nuance with the infrastructure, but I, I've probably overstayed my welcome with the introduction here, but um, yeah, looking forward to hopefully uh, learning a bit more, whether, whether we can provide some compute in return for some feedback. Um, that's really my agenda. Okay, thanks for the presentation. So just a, a, a turn of the table before we continue on that subject. So today we have, after Bob, uh, made the Mianto portal. So I'm the Jenkins Infrastructure Elected Officer. So um, uh, the community elected me as the person technically in charge of the platform. And I can speak on behalf of the community on, of the Jenkins board. Uh, then we have Hervé Lemeur. Raise your hand, Hervé. <laughs> so Hervé Lemur is working with me as a SRE. So same job, same role, same area. Uh, Stefan Merle as well. The three of us Hi, are uh, the part of the community uh, team at CloudBiz. So we work full time on the Jenkins infrastructure. Some other members are outside CloudBiz and they do the same work, but not as full time. And finally, we have Bruno Ferrarten. Um, Hello, Raise Bob. your hand. Well. So Bruno also works for the community team at uh, CloudBeats. Uh, he's developer advocate for the Jenkins project. And we just have Mark Waite uh, joining us. So Mark is our manager. He's a, for a member of the community and member of the Jenkins board uh, uh, as elected person. Hello, Mark. Um, so yes, so Hello. thanks for the introduction, Bob, about salad.com. So if I understand correctly, you will be, um, your proposal is uh, having the gen, asking if the Jenkins project will, uh, will try salad.com projects and to have some feedbacks on how it work and the product and everything. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, at this stage, um, we we're still learning what uh, use cases and workloads are, are sort of viable for our, our network. So um, I think you characterized it well. Um, yeah, we we uh, we're still it's not ready today, but in the next say month or two, um, looking for people who are kind of willing to kick the tires and and um, um, you know use some of the compute and provide us feedback. And and we have more compute than we know what to do with right now. So, so I thought you guys would be a good kind of community to explore um, whether you've got workloads that, that might be of interest to distribute. So yeah, I think you, 
you know, I'm happy to share a lot more as well, but um, uh, I think you've, you've characterized it well. So as you explain, it means that the compute of the network compute is not running on uh, servers somewhere in the data center, but on personal machines that people lend to the overall network. Is my understanding correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, I mean, if I may, I'll, I'll just take a minute to explain how it works. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, an open source client that PC gamers download to their PCs and they essentially opt in to um, provide us resources, so compute, bandwidth, and storage. Um, we've been around for four years now, and we've been primarily monetizing the network with proof of work, so crypto mining. I'm sure you guys have all heard of that. Um, but we incentivize everyone on the network um, th through a pricing model or incentive model where they get games, gift cards, subscriptions. So it abstracts away the workload. So that means that we can distribute any workload across the network. And um, after four years tapping into crypto, um, we now have these tens of thousands of gamers and their PCs with their GPUs. Um, so we're using uh, WSL, WSL2, um, Windows subsys subsystem for Linux um, to kind of standardize the compute environment across the network. And we're building a managed container service um, to support containerized workloads. And so obviously it's not a purpose-built data center as, as you describe, you know, with, with racks of, of servers um, optimized for certain workloads. Um, there's a bit of nuance here where we've got consumer brand, broadband to actually distribute jobs and also um, you know, I, I'm sure as you guys, as a bunch of engineers um, would appreciate, if you have physical access to the device, then you can, you know, we can't provide kind of the level of security that say an AWS can. So that's why we're leaning into more open source type jobs. Um, those that don't have really high data sensitivity um, uh, with their data sets. So in a nutshell, we're, we're early stage bringing this, this kind of MVP managed container service to market. And I'm, um, I'm kind of exploring who are some of the, um, initial use cases that, that perhaps we can trade free compute in return for feedback for. Okay. Looks clear on high level for me. Oh, sorry, Mark, go ahead. So Bob, I, I had a question or two. So the, the, it sounds like this is something that the, your compute model is something like the compute model that was used previously by the SETI project where donors are willing to offer a compute to a central resource. They receive, a, they receive a task, they do the compute and the results of the task are sent back to the central resource. Is that, is that a safe, a safe description or a safe analogy? Yeah, it, it is, Mark. And just to build on that, um, SETI at home or folding at home, um, you know, very different incentive model. It's you, you kind of paid by the warm and fuzzies. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's altruistic actors, charitable actors sharing their compute. So there's no no reason for nefarious actors to defraud um, SETI at home. Here we've tapped into um, proof of work, which is trustless. So it allows us to onboard nodes they've got to do 10,000 minutes uh oh, sorry 10,000 seconds contributing uh, sorry it's 10,000 minutes contributing to the network before they um uh, and we characterize those nodes as trustworthy or not trustworthy you, you know that's one data point in kind of this algorithm um to deem the reputation of a node and then we're unlocking those nodes who have been on the network built that reputation for different workloads which is which is kind of the product we're building today so yes same model um uh but we're still about six weeks out from from um actually having an mvp for people to kick the tires with so but you explained it explained that's that's the perfect analogy actually just a different incentive model thanks okay thanks very much so so ultimately you've got what we would consider untrusted compute but that's willing to donate. And, and that's that I think will be a different mental model for us trying to find a place where we 
we what are the tasks that we can do where where we would run them on what we would classify as untrusted compute i know you've done a trust developed a trust model but for us it would look like untrusted compute and we've we've actually got isolation levels already in some of our systems that intentionally do something like that untrusted but this is sort of another level of of untrusted than what we've already got so i think we'd need some time to consider it to ponder it and to see okay what places might we might we apply this effectively and which places would the risks outweigh the outweigh the benefits of the additional compute that you're offering now I guess one another question for me is typical duration of the contribution from one of these workers is it we have jobs that take 30 minutes to execute on a on a multi CPU box on one of the cloud providers is that way outside of the range of what you're used to do you typically give them a task that's a a one minute task or a a five second task how how does your how does your your allocation work in terms of compute time that they donate? There's a very wide spectrum. The, the one thing we can't provide is on demand, you know, sort of six nines of uptime, as you can imagine. Um, uh, but it's it's really interesting actually looking at the characteristics of the different nodes on the network. Um, there is a good cohort, say 10 to 20%, who actually run our software 24 seven. And, and we kind of characterize those individuals as gamers that have perhaps got an extra um, PC, an older gen PC that they're just leaving running the whole time in order to generate a, you know, a Discord subscription um, or, or whatnot from the value of that, that device. So we certainly have devices that have a, a respectable uptime um, and we can, we can certainly accommodate 30 minute jobs and, and, the way we're designing the system is where if if a job does get interrupted or terminated, um, uh, we can fail over to to another node on the network and actually see that container kind of execute through. So, um, but thirty minutes is is definitely within the realm. Um, and and one of the the fun things we're working on is kind of gamification, where you know if if someone is going in there to kill um, our software in the midst of a job. Um, we can actually encourage them to, hey, give us, you know, give us five minutes to either take a snapshot or um, um, or, or finish out the job. So um, another another bit of nuance of our infrastructure you've you've stumbled upon there. Thank you. Thanks very much. So it sounds like in the future we'll have more conversations as you're getting closer. We need to have some conversations within the Jenkins project about things that might or might not fit. Thanks. I might have some question because I wasn't able to find any information about um, what kind of isolation is provided on the workload on these machines and what kind of encryption is used to ensure that the owner of the underlying machine isn't able to, to pick anything inside the workload because container is not encrypted and not isolated. Um, and the third question I have for you is do you have uh, metrics about the electrical consumption uh, of that thing? Yeah, so so let me, uh, I, I missed the first question, I'm sorry. So let me step back and then you can re-ask that one. Um, when it comes to the suppliers, um, so, so the people running our software, you know, we, we mentioned, so in our Discord community, there's 50,000 people, um, mostly gamers. Um, we're very transparent about, hey, there is a catch to running salad. Um, it costs electricity. You know, if if you're getting rewarded for your compute cycles um, and there's no catch, then obviously something's wrong. So so we're, it's almost a marketing line for us to say, hey, there is a catch. Um, you've got to maintain your cooling system of your PC. Um, you've got to be aware of your electricity usage and, and that's the catch. So fully opt in and... and um, and the community is very aware of that. We kind of published that all through the FAQs. Um, so, so we let that decision about the economical rationality of, of running our software, the onus is on the supplier to make that decision whether they want to actually su supply their compute resources or not. Um, second question around the level of in encryption. When not employing anything like fully homomorphic encryption or, or um, 
anything at this stage beyond just the compute environment. What we do have um, outside of the, the virtual machine that we spin up is a bit like the gaming industry. There's, there's certain watches that we have as part of this reputation system to see whether um, that host is actually um, running any nefarious software or interrupting any traffic from that container. Um, that kind of feeds into the reputation system um, that we have for the nodes on the network, along with you know, onboarding new nodes in that trustless environment where you get paid only through proof of work. Um, there's also other endpoints we can use where we're working towards working with SIFT Dot com who kind of provides a, um, a a rating of of the trustworthiness of an individual and we're also working towards um, having a a salad card where you turn that latent value of your pc into a essentially a credit card or debit card that you spend online and as part of that process there'll be a kyc so it's kind of the equivalent of a know your know your provider uh, for us so um, multiple kind of levels to that that are going to minimize fraud there but ultimately we do not recommend the platform for anything that has um sensitive data sets so we're really focused on kind of open source um the open source community and and um workloads and, and data sets and, and code that is going to be made public anyway we feel like that's kind of our initial um target market for for our resources and and I'm sorry, I missed your first question. Oh, I, I you, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry, thanks. Sorry, I'm not English native, so I might have missed. Uh, so does that mean, I'm not sure to understand, there is no encryption, but it's compensated by the different layer of trust uh, indicator that you have put on your model. Is my understanding correct? That's correct, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, our head of engineering here would, would be the first to say, um, because we don't have physical access to the machine, um, we cannot provide an SLA guaranteeing the security of, of the workload on those machines. So um, that's kind of our party line here is do not distribute sensitive data sets, do not distribute secrets, do not distribute anything that's, that's kind of... Um, um, highly sensitive with with the data. So, you know, I, I don't see a future for us supporting, say, HIPAA compliant, sensitive medical data workloads. Um, that's just not in our future. We're, we're kind of targeting a very different type of, um, of, of customer who doesn't have those, those security concerns. Okay, because the thing is that even without going to the hardcore uh, medical or banking model, we have a simple example there. Most all our data for the plugin of Jenkins that are built and tested are public. However, if you want to be able to git clone the repositories to avoid reaching the API rate limit of github.com, you need a key. And mm. the old CI system usually have needs some kind of key to identify who is getting the data. And that one is sensitive because if anyone get that, they can they can reuse it to whatever use case they could have, good or bad. But that's a credential, that's a secret, which is sensitive by nature, even though the data is public and reachable by everyone. It's just there is, in the AAA framework, we are at the firm. It's accounting issue. It's not authentication, neither authorization. It's accounting because of the API rate limit to not destroy the GitHub. Because with such a network, that's why they put API rate limit. Same for Docker containers. If they don't put API rate limit on their system, such a network could absolutely destroy their service and the requirement for a token. And we are in that area for part of our feedback, which is not sensitive, but not untrusty. See what I mean? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to take, I've jotted that down. I know um, Daniel and Kyle, they're, they're sort of head of product, head of engineering here. Um, this is something we've looked at is, is kind of the management of secrets and keys. Um, and I know they had an answer to it, but, but I'd be lying if, uh, if I told you what that was right now. So I'll have to circle back. I'll come to a future, uh, perhaps I'll bring them along because I know this is a, 
a question that'll come up multiple times. I'd love for them to join perhaps next week as well. Okay, and my last question was about the workload isolation, more for QoS question more than security. Uh, is it virtualization? Is it raw containers on the machines? What is the, the kind of technology that, that could be used there? Yeah, so we're um, the vast majority of machines on our network um, running Windows and, and now shipping native to Windows, we've got um, WSL or WSL2, which gives us the ability to, to actually um, tap into the GPU or 3D acceleration as well. So we're using that Windows subsystem for Linux to spin up um, a Linux environment. And that's, that's the compute environment um, uh, which we run these, these containers in. So that's standardized across the network um, despite having very heterogeneous um, hardware that that, that uh, uh, powers our network. Um, sorry to interrupt. Do you have any real Linux machines also? Because gaming on Linux is a thing in 22. So does your product work directly on Linux? Yeah, we because our software is open source, we actually had um, a community member who who cut a build um, for, for Linux. Uh, I, top of mind, don't have the numbers of how many nodes on the network are actually running Linux versus Windows, but I do know that it's um, same with, with um, Mac. Um, we had one of the community members actually create um, uh, uh, a version of Salad for Mac as well, but... The one, the only one we officially support is is um, Windows right now because it's the vast majority of of the network. Of course, and, thank and you. Is there a way in in the um, the application to specify which kind of of nodes, which are not nodes, we want to run the the job on? For example, if we got some jobs that need a powerful machine. And then we can specify that when we send the the job to build. Yeah, this this is something we're working through at the moment. Um, so so we're lucky we're kind of standing on the shoulders of giants in a sense where we're essentially copying the pricing model of the managed container services of the hyperscale cloud. And and right now, kind of the resource selection you can make is how many vCPUs and how, how much um, RAM are you looking for to support or, or will that container consume? Um, one of the things we're struggling with and thinking through right now is uh, when it comes to GPU resources, um, how do we establish brackets for that? In the cloud, it's easy because there's like three or four, you know, there's the K80, A100, V100, there's kind of a set number of GPUs. For us, there's you know a list of, of five dozen different GPUs that, that that kind of make up the majority of of the network. And how do we actually allow individuals to select what GPU type do they want and what dependencies? Like, do you need CUDA for for your workload? And and how do we kind of provide that um, that pass through support um, from from the container from that Linux? Sorry, from that Linux uh, VM. So uh, all of these things we're working through at the moment, and and these are kind of questions that we're um, um, we're, we're building towards having answers for. Um, but ho hopefully that that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Okay, so that that gives a clear idea of what it does and what it does not. So thanks for that. That's at, at least for me it clarifies. Um, so as, as Mark uh, said, uh, we have to evaluate uh, what kind of workload could possibly uh, run on such a model, given what we have, uh, uh, most of the open source content, uh, uh, evaluating the risk with the security team as well. Um, is it okay if we continue communicating on the community forum where you have added a message uh, a few weeks ago, I think it was two, three weeks ago? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and um, I'll, I'll just finish by saying really appreciate the questions and your time and consideration, uh, guys. And, and um, yeah, look forward to continuing that, that communication on the forum for sure. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. Bob. Is there any one last question or feedback or from anyone there?
Okay, so we'll continue to our usual meeting then. Thanks a lot, Bob. You're welcome to stay if you want to follow or go go away. That's a public meeting, so your choice. I'll stick around. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so let's get started with announcement. Are there so just a thing, just a reminder, folks, I'll be in PTO again. <laughs> hey, these French people. Um, Friday will be my last day, then I will be unavailable until the 7, which means I need uh, you folks to take care of the meeting, meeting notes, and the recording for the two next weekly meetings. Um, I let you decide who is going to take care of that charge and drive the meetings. Uh, chaos for everyone. No, I, I just... that's my gift for... for um, uh, sorry, Hervé. <laughs> <laughs> September. Yeah. Uh, are there any of you in PTO during the two upcoming weeks? So I'm out next Tuesday. I'll be just arriving back from Alaska on grandbaby visit. So I actually might be available, but I'll probably be sleepy from multiple hours in an airplane. Don't think I should attend a meeting trying to run it. Fair. So it's the 25, is that correct? Uh, correct. OK. Um, are there other PTOs? Nope. Next announcement, uh, we had the night visory only on plugin today, security advisory. So uh, has, Damien, has it been published? I haven't seen it and I'm not seeing the update center updated oh, yet. Um, so it's, it's, I, th I think it's at least in progress and news by saying in progress is certainly accurate. I've not seen the published email from, from the security team yet. Okay, I saw that the first part on the plugin, open source plugin was okay. So, okay, maybe it's in progress. Uh, might, okay, so let's wait for the finish. Uh, usually it can take a few hours before the finish uh, time for US to wake up and get ready to start. Um, so that's plugins only, so low impact for us. No action expected from the team. CI Jenkins IO uh, will be updated uh, right on time. Is that okay? Any other question on security topic? Okay, we have a weekly core release like every week. <laughs> um, sounds like no issue during the build or the packaging. Um, Docker image has been published, so we should have a pull request to update our Docker images in the upcoming minutes. I don't remember the number of the release, and I assume that we have the checklist. 2.365 and the checklist is in progress not yet complete but everything looks good on the checklist cool. so it's there have been no failures on the checklist the job completed successfully the change log's been merged but is not yet visible to users and the the docker image is confirmed available so all sorts of positive okay um just a note about the security. Everything looks good as well. Didn't saw any issue. Uh, so yes, we can proceed. <laughs> Do you have other announcements, folks? Uh, nope. None from me. Okay, let's proceed. So next weekly, next Tuesday as usual. Uh, next LTS, I heard, is it somewhere in September, Mark? September 7. 2.361.1. Nice, I will get back from PTO to get on this one. <laughs> Very good, yeah. And that is the first Jenkins release that will require at least Java 11. Java 8 no longer supported. That's the first Jenkins LTS. Dropping Java 8. Yep. Nice. So security release is today. Uh, do we have another major event on the upcoming weeks? Nope. Okay. Is it okay to proceed to the usual operational overall? Cool. Yes. So four issue closed last week. 
Um, earlier this morning, we had an issue with the update center that was caused by me. Uh, when we refactored the Puppet configuration, we ended up with uh, providing the same SSH key host to both agents. So the good point is that uh, the controllers are not connecting to the agent to run builds if the SSH key hosts are not matching, which is a recent behavior change on the SSH plugin and Git plugin. So that demonstrates that uh, it works when it mismatch. So it was only uh, one configuration line away to fix it. So thanks Alex for raising that issue, in particular before the advisory that could help to release plugins. We had uh, around 10 to 12 hours um, uh, of plugin release not treated that were treated on one time. So everything is okay, no failure, and the, the builds are flowing now again. Um, we had also an issue fixed that took some time, the GDK8 Docker images for the previous LTS weren't built because uh, we weren't strict enough on the um, process in charge of building these images. The LTS2, uh, the current LTS1 uh, should have been built not by the master branch, but from its own stable branch on the Jenkins CI slash Docker repository. So we did a patch, which should be only for the duration the, the, of that stable line that only builds the GDK8 images and that copy as it's the GDK17 images published by the main job to the former GDK17 preview. The use case is that the user using the first version of the LTS with GDK8 or GDK17 preview tags should now be able to use the latest uh, patch versions. So thanks everyone involved on that because that one an easy one. There has been some a proposal by Basil Crow uh, about the way we could manage in the future this repository. Uh, that's really interesting. I think that's worth uh, discussing and trying it. The goal will be to to fit the same model as the packaging or release system with the master branch with the weekly where contributor merge issues if they are approved and then maintain of the repository have to roll back to the stable lines, at least the two last one for LTS, eventually being automated. That would avoid such issues and would ensure that all the community review each change to be backported. Because what is lying under this one is that the latest OpenGDK minor patch update that we did uh, broke some new support backport of the C group version two support. So memory limits are working on recent host system, but it also created memory issues with some of the Jenkins plugins. So it's always a matter of, should we merge these updates right now in the case of LTS line or not? There is no doubt we had to do this for the weekly. However, for LTS that could ask, let's say created some mayhem for the LTS user, which we don't want. So that's a community discussion to get started, but it's important for us to understand the concern and what it could uh, cause in issues for us as well. There has been a misguided issue redirected to the, to the correct forum. And finally, work around account Jenkins IO web application where we had, um, let's say, hold instruction that are not valid anymore around the spam. And some users were um, unlegitimately uh, spam blocked by the system. So thanks Daniel and Vadek to update, for updating the image. And thanks Hervé for helping me on automating that application. We did not update that application since months. So the goal was to add all the automation system on this one. As a reminder, the reason is because that application should die soon in favor of either key cloak system or another system that gave in uh, shared with us because it's an old Java application and it does not, uh, it's not solid, rock solid enough. Now work in progress, unless there are questions on these topics. Little addition, yep. uh, I've uh, made a patch to a CTU uh, plugin to be able to Correct. use uh, Java Pass. And, uh, Absolutely. 
So thanks for that contribution. I don't know if it's merged yet, but no, it has been but tested we... by yeah. us successfully using the incremental system. So great work to specify custom Java pin pass. So that one is foundational for us for the GDK 17 upcoming updates, because we need at any time to to be able to separate which GDK is used to run the agent and which GDK is provided by default to developer in order for them to build against the specific version. And in that case, for EC2 virtual machines agents, uh, the path to provide a custom Java version that should be the same as the controller wasn't feature present yet. It was relying on some Akish way or the default Java installation. But since we have at least three GDK installed on our machines, then yeah, that can be a problem. Thanks Harvey for stepping on this one. I hope that will be released soon. Are there other tasks finished uh, during last week folks that I could have forgotten and not tracked by an issue? Nope. So let's continue to the work in progress. Um, I'm taking then on the notes order. So we had a new issue about incorrect missing Maven setting file with a gems Nord. Um, so the first part of the issue that was clear for me uh, is that we took there was an issue between Windows and Linux templates for Maven builds. That's not the case. Uh, then it it looks like it, there is a philosophical discussion about should we add Maven repositories per POMXML for each plugin, or should we define that once and for all on the system? And finally, it seems that James is also asking us to to use a, um, a catch-all mirror for Maven dependencies, so we control where the dependencies are coming from. Right now, as a reminder, on CI Jenkins IO, when you build a Maven project, the dependencies are downloaded for a bunch of different servers. We tend to store so, uh, at least the Jenkins dependencies inside repo Jenkins CI, the GFrog Artifactory system, but some other dependency can be downloaded from other areas. The goal on CI Jenkins CEO is to let developers to, to not being blocked by security systems because CI Jenkins IO does not publish or deploy anything. It's not sensitive workloads. So there is no problem if there is a, a supply chain vector attack there because it wouldn't have any consequence since all agents are ephemeral, so it cannot be persisted. And the idea is it's, it's limited by the, let's say the intrinsic usage of the controller. Um, so the idea is that issue might be merged to the one that Hervé is currently working on about the proxy, because the, if we set up the proxy for all agents, then we will be able to finally control which second, uh, let's say backend repositories are used. So that will be easy, it's only Nginx configuration. But I've asked James to uh, just clarify what you want the infrastructure just to describe so we can evaluate the amount of work and the consequences. The main risk I see here is that could increase the bandwidth uh, that we consume from GFrog Artifactory repository, which is an issue already today that we have to decrease it. So that's, that's the risk, but James disagrees. So maybe I misunderstood something and there are some magical Maven things that I don't know. So that's why I asked him to clarify because I think he has a, a good set of ideas that could help us on that area. Is there any question or things that I might have missed on this one or clarification to make? Nope. Okay, next one, a user told us they entered too many times a CAPTCHA code. Um, I'm flagging this one as a um, word issue and be careful on this one because the GitHub user has been created today. There is already an account 
with some data that hasn't been used in some times. I wasn't able to understand exactly what happened. Um, so I might rely on the security team to have a double pair of eye there, uh, or eventually ask the user to create a new handle. Uh, Mark, do you remember if the CAPTCHA code is only a temporary blocking? Is it by IP? Or I, you don't I know? don't know the details of the blocking that the CAPTCHA does. Okay, so we'll have to, to read the code of account Jenkins you then. Um, so I propose that that one, like the previous one, we keep them somewhere not on the next milestone and wait for feedback from the security team. Is that okay for everyone? Wait for security feedback. Uh, next one is publish acceptance test harness. So that's adding a, a container image build test and deploy on infra CI for the Jenkins acceptance test harness. So almost there, um, but it requires us to create a new case that we never had before is that that image is under the Jenkins namespace on Docker Hub and not the Jenkins CI infra. So we need to adapt all the components to be able to support additional, in particular, the credentials and the GitHub checks. So Tim is working with me on that one, uh, almost there. Uh, we are actually discussing about GitHub checks, which is, let's say, uh, some kind of nitpicking. The only last thing will be trying the deploy with tag. And that one can only be tried when you create a tag on the repository to see if you have the full chain of credential. We're closing. Any question on this one? Okay, um, Stefan, can I let you do a status check about uh, collecting data dog metrics for the ephemeral VM agents? So we um, can provide a dashboard to developers to see what went wrong during their build if the agent crashes or is OOM killed? Yes, that's a work in progress for now. I tried manually on a VM on Azure. I'm in the process of uh, uh, adding that in, uh, in our um, uh, controllers by uh, code, as code. Um, still a work in progress for that. Okay, um, and the next step is EC2 virtual machine, is that correct? Yes, first Azure and then EC2, yes. EC2 VMs, okay. Thanks, Stefan. You're welcome. Next issue is uh, providing Java 17 Windows agents. Uh, so it's a split work. So Hervé worked on uh, the Linux agent part why Linux right now? It's because we want to have the same template whether we run a container or a virtual machine. So Hervé uh, paved the way with the Linux because we have Linux today uh, container built. Um, so Hervé, what's the status about Linux? I didn't have the time to test it completely before my PTO, but uh, mm -hmm. it should be quite okay. Same one, um, Linux to be tested and deployed if working, cool. And on my side, I'm working on uh, being able to build Windows container with Packer. Uh, I've started the process and I'm dealing with nitpicking with PowerShell, differences between the default Windows Server VM template on Azure or um, uh, Amazon versus the official container image for Windows Server. There are some tools missing, same like Ubuntu that's on Docker image that missed the sudo command, for instance. So that one is the second one. Once both are okay, then we can deliver the new Java 17 Windows agent because Java 17 is already installed on our templates. Uh, work in progress. Nitpicking on PowerShell. Uh, I reckon I need to describe the artifact caching proxy status. Yes, so 
there was in the past uh, a proxy uh, behind the uh, repo that uh, uh, that Jenkins.io to avoid uh, uh, consuming too much uh, bandwidth uh, from GFrog, and uh, uh, we are uh, we are reintroducing it. Uh, with uh, with uh, many uh, proxy, one uh, on in, in uh, each provider, AWS, uh, Azure, um, Docker, um, DigitalOcean, and I'm uh, I've uh, put uh, one in Azure uh, to test it, and I'm uh, uh, modifying the pipeline or sh um, shared pipeline library. To be able to to configure Maven uh, to use uh, this uh, proxy depending on the agent uh, location um, to know where the um, to know this I'm uh, I'll add uh, an environment variable uh, uh, in the agent template so we can determine uh, the provider. It's in a good way. I've uh, made a test uh, on Jenkins Infratest plugin, and said uh, Jenkins.io is uh, correctly uh, retrieving uh, data from my proxy. Um, the next step will be to uh, add a user password protection uh, in addition to the whitelisting, uh, the IP whitelisting. And then uh, deploy a proxy in each provider and uh, publish a shared pipeline library. Thanks a lot. Any question? Okay. Next work in progress is the Jenkins underscore release Twitter account, which is an automated system which reads the RSS feed of the release uh, of each plugin and create tweets to say, hey, there is a new release of that plugin. That's the idea of the account. So I was able to recover it uh, thanks for the help of Kosuke. So all the infra team should have access to the credentials or to reset the password uh, using our private uh, email address and the password has been shared on one password for now. So Kosuke won't uh, be able to use it. So now the next step is to understand what was the automation system. Uh, I saw Gavin mention it was on DLVR. So the next step, so account recovered. I'm not alone to be able to access it. Now next step is to uh, I, I assume understand what the LVR is, so not like it's kind of magical, whatever platform in the cloud that allows you to yeah. publish automatically from events. It could be a good opportunity, I think, to try uh, some Twitter as code on this account, and it should be uh, then uh, extended maybe for the official Jenkins account. So. You, people wouldn't have, or is there uh, could be another uh, way of publishing tweets without asking for a plus one on GitHub, maybe. Opening a pull request, getting review on it, and then be published. I am. Tweets for advocacy. So, a note for Mark and Bruno there. Um, if anyone is willing to help me, because I'm not really at ease with these whatever platforms, yep. uh, I could absolutely have some help. I'm, I have no idea how it authenticate, how it connect to Twitter. Is it the same account or is there a DLV account that we also need to recover? And also to add, check what is going wrong. You can add me to the issue and check that with you. Cool. As for help. Every volunteer. So I will uh, add also that issue uh, to the next milestone, like all the previous one, and I will add you uh, to this. Um, Array, what's the status of uh, retrieving access to the NPM namespaces? I don't remember. Um, I think we can remove it from the milestone as I'm waiting for GitHub support response. Uh, 
NPM support there you is mean? A, yes. Uh, GitHub NPM, it's the same. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, NPM has been booked by GitHub and by Microsoft and their by GitHub. And yep. I, I took they are, had uh, is on GitHub. Okay. I took they had different support team. That ends my question. Okay. Oh, uh, um, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe on NPM, but um, no, it's linked to my GitHub account. Okay. Uh, there is a Jenkins user, which has uh, who has no plugin, no activity, and I've opened uh, uh, Reclaim uh, on their support to see if we can uh, retrieve this account. So we then will be able to convert it in a, a proper organization, so we can publish plugins in Jenkins and BAM organization. Okay. So let's wait from their feedback. Many thanks, uh, Hervé. No, yeah. Uh, weekly release build does not resume. So that's an issue that I took. I took it will be easy. Um, I stumbled um, across one issue, Mark. We have to ask ourselves, do we really want release build will fail to automatically resume using the retry pipeline? That's the question uh, I need to ask uh, all the release team on that issue, because maybe we don't want it for in that case. A valid point. I think that's a safe, a uh, good question to ask. We certainly shouldn't implement it without asking the question first. <laughs> good. I, I hadn't thought of that. Um, however, um, maybe we could say we want automatic retry if the agent fail. But even that, I'm not sure in the case of a release. Because uh, last time we had agent failure, that was for good reasons. <laughs> so we didn't want to add a wave of builds waiting for a failing agent. They had some fundamental fix to deliver before being able to retry. Yeah, release release builds are far far less frequently, right? Once a week, as opposed to every ten minutes, every five minutes, or every hour that happens on pull requests. So I think it's fair to say no. We're going to intentionally not enable retry because human beings need to analyze release failure. Absolutely. So if it's okay, I will ask the question and I will ping team on the issue directly. As a release officer, we will have the last word on that one, unless someone disagree and we can then start discussing. No problem. Nope. Okay. Last one. I've just started working on Puppet. So that one is blocking the migration of uh, the virtual machine updates Jenkins IO from AWS to Oracle Cloud. Um, and that issue blocks because Mirror Brain user, which is a remnant of former system that was running on that virtual machine, that user owns the scripts that are syncing all the plugin updates to all Mirror system and all the archiving systems. So there is uh, two steps. One, putting back on automation everything that has been managed manually on that machine for three years before we all joined. And second point is deleting that user mirror brain. So that means maybe having to create a new user to be used across all the earthing and SSH command of all the release scripts of core and all plugins. So there are some work to be done on that area uh, that could be risky for the releases. So I've delayed the elements after the security advisory. And I will try my best to work on that, but I think we have to expect some delays if I'm on PTO. Uh, the reason is I don't want to throw my colleagues under the bus for this one. Unless you are willing to try it, you can. It will be my pleasure, but I don't want you to die on the front, right? Um, so might be slow down with Damien PTO. Uh, and also it took some time because a bunch of puppet uh, fact refactorization has been done that was required for this one. So I call that a foundational silent work, but yeah, we are in good, good direction. Required uh, puppet factorization. 
Okay, folks, almost there. That's been almost one hour. Um, just a quick check of the task that you think we should add to the next milestone. I did uh, next to the one we have there. Given your current workloads, um, there has been last week, as a reminder, request to add SSL valid SSL certificate for the private instance, which means switching setbot for these services to DNS validation instead of HTTP because private address cannot be reached by let's encrypt bots. Um, that's absolutely possible. That required to create a specific credentials restricted to the DNS record zone. So that token on Azure cannot be used and abused to generate certificate for another domain. I feel like that one is a bonus unless someone really wants to do it. It's not emergency and it's not important. So I propose that we keep it on the backlog there. There is one though that are that is important. Um, CI Jenkins IO, despite what we said earlier, is currently generating data that is then consumed for uh, making and deploying the Jenkins.io website. It should not, because that means there are credentials that should not be there. They are isolated following the state of the art of credential per folder isolation. However, we will want these elements to be migrated to infra CI, which is a private instance where we can store credentials safely. So I propose that we move that issue on the upcoming um, uh, on the upcoming milestone. And I'm happy to work with someone on that one and pass the knowledge so we can get started. Uh, because that's not that complicated, but maybe need a first uh, step. Is there anyone interested to work on that with me? And then take over once I'm on PTO? Do you think I will be able to? Absolutely. So with pleasure. Okay. Um, okay, we need to add it to the next milestone. Are there other issues that you saw that were raised on the path the dates that are important to look over for the upcoming week? Nope. Okay. So that's the end. So I'm gonna open and create the new issue update and publish everything. Uh, folks, you will have to uh, manage the next week meetings. I'm stopping the screen share. I'm stopping the recording. Bye bye, everyone.